Hello everybody, welcome to a pictorial journey as we repurpose the waterfall property for the South African School of Preaching. This is the derelict house we bought, it had squatters living in it, it had been totally ransacked, everything had been broken off and stolen if it had any value. All the taps, all the electricity, all the lights, all the fittings, everything had gone. There was no water, so the toilets didn't flash, flush, and as you can see, uh, bars and uh, yes, the drain pipes had been stolen because they were aluminium and were sold. We had visitors, Brian Stewart came to see as we restarted to uh, rebuild and strip all the bad tiles off and re put piping in and uh, start the refurbishing. Refurbish yard was in a miserable state uh, around about four meters of bush it was full of snakes by the way the people who helped us clean complained about all the snakes and as you can see it was totally derelict there was even holes in the ceiling uh, this is where the geyser the hot water tank had been stolen through the tiles and then of course the water came and destroyed the ceiling We had to replace all the bars and here's the yard. We had uh, eight men work for four days in a row trying to clear it and they could hardly make a dent. We eventually had to get big machines in to do the cleaning. And then we had this wonderful man, Andre Pretorius, one of our church members, a carpenter by trade. Unbelievable job he did. He put in three kitchens, repurposed all the cupboards and even built some cabinets for the students and so we closed in other doors so this is Chico my main man a fantastic guy regrettably he passed away shortly after helping us uh, repurpose the house so this is the double garage that was turned into a granny flat Here's the kitchen being redone. The stove was donated by one of our church members. And this is where the double doors where the garage used to be, where there's two windows now. And this is now this, the uh, granny flat where guest uh, lecturers live. We thank God for Les Warren who came and rewired the entire house and then also all the new student accommodation. All the wires had been stripped out and as you can see, um, the bathrooms and uh, kitchen this is the bedrooms they're starting to look really really beautiful uh, we built some new gates uh, in fact every gate had to be replaced this is a new door into the side of the granny flat and gas geysers were installed an outside toilet was built for the laborers and here's Les, and Les Warren once again helping us troubleshoot shoot leaks that appeared all over the property. So we put the burglar guards back after re removing all of them and this is the granny flat uh, that our guest lecturers use. The house turned out really really nice, this is the vegetable garden that uh, the students are putting in and then we got the heavy machinery these TLBs uh, here they're helping us discover where the septic tank is these TLBs were amazing and the drivers were quite incredible we chopped down a lot of trees and they helped us remove the stumps and then flatten the land so we can put the accommodation and uh, the kitchen and the toilets in this is putting the new driveway in at the bottom of the property. We're blessed to have unbelievable soil, it's just fantastic for crops. And this is where the accommodation is going. It was a real, real challenge uh, flattening it, but uh, with the use of uh, these TLBs and a lot of ingenuity we were able to accomplish quite a bit. Unfortunately, we had mechanical problems. Hey, thanks to Garden Ridge Church of Christ for paying for the borehole. 
and uh, this is it being installed and this is the first water where we, we got water at 80 meters the borehole went to 100 meters unfortunately uh, well here's some visitors we had but they didn't scare off anybody and there we have uh, 7,000 liters a big thank you to Martin Wallet, uh, a brother in Christ from the Empangeni Church of Christ who helped us um, talk me through building these septic tanks he, he uh, sent me diagrams and we're eventually able to put this in up to spec well never used a chainsaw before in my life but thank you to YouTube that taught me and uh, well after chopping one tree down I considered myself an expert and uh, so uh, thought well if I can do it, somebody else can do it. So I taught our principal. This is Colin Ngeleka. He now lives on the property. And then he taught our students. And then we taught them using the chainsaw to build a chicken coop. And uh, they really, really enjoyed this exercise. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. A wonderful bonding exercise we all got to do together. Chickens have been laying well and uh, we we look forward to many eggs from them. Our students went on to build a baptistry for uh, in a local community and uh, because of their efforts there they were able to to teach people in the community and uh, witness their obedience to Christ in baptism. Very proud of our students. We had floods earlier in the year. Uh, unfortunately, there was massive loss of life. We had over 500 people die from the floods in our province. And it affected uh, the school quite dramatically. The house was flooded all around, fortunately not inside. Even our borehole was flooded out. And we had to make some major uh, changes to the contours in the garden, rerouting water pipes, electrical pipes. We had to put in a lot of French drains, bidum, stone, slotted pipe. Ah, and then we were blessed to be able to put in some gates, a top gate and a bottom gate, both identical. The bottom gate uh, being used for the concrete trucks and the other trucks that uh, brought in building materials. This is a brother in Christ learning how to float concrete, James Kunda. He really enjoyed this exercise. Once again, our TLBs doing their thing. I was blessed to have my grandchildren come and visit me. One of my favorite things, they love playing with a chicken, getting all muddy with the rains. Uh, and then they also enjoyed the produce, the, the pears, and playing with the borehole water. And then the big job, flattening the land. And this is uh, my favorite toy. This is a water level, just a tank, 30 meters of pipe, and some blue food coloring. Um, and then a stick and a tape measure and uh, using this old Egyptian method we were able to get this piece of property uh, where we were going to put the concrete millimeter level unfortunately we didn't have the electronic dumpy levels so we just used this ancient technique um, I must say a lot of people uh, the TLB drivers found it very very, very skeptical but once uh, they saw how flat we got the level we got the concrete, um, they were convinced. This is the layout for the classroom block. Uh, we would have our functions. Unfortunately, all this work had to be taken up because I'd forgotten to put the plastic in. And so all this uh, shattering had to taken up, take up, and then we put the plastic. Shattering went back, then the reinforcing and then little plastic lugs to hold the re reinforcing of the ground and then the big trucks came in. I can't even, I've lost count of how many trucks came in. We use this concrete paddle machine a lot. Uh, I must say the students and some of our laborers really really enjoyed working with. Concrete weights for no man. We had to do it in sections so there was no cracking. 100 mil thick concrete, uh, quite a strong mix. Uh, 36 meters long, 5 meters wide, and this is where the student accommodation, the kitchen, the uh, dining room, and the toilet facilities will be uh, seated. 
we had to put two people on this machine because it could easily get away from you and uh, I say the students found it very amusing as they worked with it. This is the first unit to arrive. It's a shipping container, six meters. Half of it went to a, a little bit of an accommodation unit. The other half went to storage. And then the first uh, unit arrived where the, the students would be living in. Unfortunately, it was so poorly made, as you can see, we had to have it taken away and redone. The other units we had built on site, as you can see, the uh, ablution facilities. This is the classroom block. Uh, being built on the slab that was put down earlier. This is uh, Chalmers, a wonderful brother in Christ who uh, did all our plumbing work. And then we had this big bank to put up, no money to do it on, so tires are free. So uh, every time I went up there, I took a load of tires and eventually we got a nice bank done and then a sister in Christ gave us all those plants to hold it up. So Colin Galeka, our principal, lives in that house and uh, this is the student area. The jacarandas, as you can see, and the jasmine blessed us and the students are really, really enjoying the new accommodation. As you can see, they've put in some grass. We're looking forward to it, uh, covering this summer. We also tried some grass seeds. That's a green that you see there. And so that grass came up by seed. There's our principal, Colin Galeka. What an amazing man. What a great job he's doing with the students. And uh, there's our, our new bank with the tires working like a charm. And of course our chickens doing their thing. We've added an, a new area for them to go and shortly we'll be introducing ducks and rabbits uh, into this caged area. 5th of November we had our opening ceremony. We sang some songs of praise. We had some speeches. Some of our guests have played with the chickens. We had a wonderful meal together and uh, unfortunately the rain came we got all muddy but it was a very very special occasion about six, 60 people arrived uh, for that well thank you for watching everybody to god be the glory we're very proud of the school and look forward to seeing uh, what god is going to do through it